Hello folks, welcome to Science Show where we discuss a famous science book every day. Uh, today we're going to be discussing a brief history of time and uh, today I have my guest Sabona Isaacberry and we're going to be asking each other a few questions about the chapters. Um, cool. So, uh, let me begin with the first question, are you ready? Mm -hmm. The first question is this, uh, Stephen Hawking states that there are two main theories of science, of physics that we have today. Uh, what are those two theories and what is the problem with them? Well, uh, there are gravity, uh, or spe uh, uh, the general theory of relativity, and there's quantum mechanics. And the problem is that they are incompatible with each other. I don't know exactly why. I think that's just what it, uh, the book states. And that's right, they're incompatible with each other. So, um, the reason why they're incompatible with each other is because of this. You know, in quantum mechanics, uh, everything is quantized, right? Mm -hmm. That was the big discovery by Planck. What was Planck's big discovery? He knew, he found out that uh, every atom had a quantized energy levels, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that the electrons could not be anywhere. Instead, they had to take up discrete, uh, discrete energy levels around the atom. And then Einstein took it a step further and showed via the photoelectric effect that um, that you had to excite uh, to 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 move atoms and to move electrons. Um, you have to excite them uh, to their quantized energy levels, or otherwise they're not gonna they're not gonna change uh, states. Okay. So uh, quantum mechanics, as you can tell from the name, is all about uh, having discrete, um, dis making nature discrete, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it be discrete energy levels, whether it be something like the photoelectric effect or uh, whatnot. Yeah. But then if you try to quantize gravity, there's a problem. If you try to make gravity come in little chunks called gravitons, uh, gravitons are, are kind of like a, a little chunk of gravity. If you try to quantize uh, gravity using gravitons, it leads to infinities. So instead of, for example, if you want to find the gravitational force between two objects, instead of getting something like five newtons, you would get infinity. That doesn't make any sense. And so the obvious way to quantize gravity fails. Uh, so that's why and so it was Einstein's dream to come up with a unified theory of quantum physics and, uh, general, and the general theory of relativity. So we're still trying to do that. And um, yes, we are marching closer every day. So are you ready for the next question? Do you, do you want to ask your next question or do you want me to ask my next question? You can ask your question. Then I'll be ready to ask mine. Okay. So Stephen Hawking says that the ultimate goal of science is this. Uh, to define the interaction of all particles in uh, the universe. Yeah, more or less. He says that the ultimate goal of science is to come up with a single unified theory to describe everything in the universe. Um, now, speaking of a single unified theory, um, we discussed in the previous episode the paradox of having a grand unified theory in the first place. Now, can you tell me what um, Hawking's resolution to the paradox was, or at least his answer, maybe not resolution to the paradox? Hmm. Well, his answer to the paradox, uh, maybe not a resolution. Well, it's probably, I think that his answer to the paradox was something like this. Uh, since the universe <coughs> determined, uh, since the universe had determined us and uh, natural selection is basically everywhere on Earth, perhaps natural selection is within the universe too. And the universe is evolving with us. I think that was at least part of his answer. Yeah, and it's called the anthropic principle. The idea that... Anthropic. No, anthropic. It, does it have to relate to entropy? Nope. It has oh to relate God. with anthropology. Oh That's God. where anthropic principle comes from. Because the idea is that just like us, uh, the universe evolved uh, to have certain parameters. And so Hawking's idea was that the universe has evolved to give rise to organisms uh, that can find a grand unified theory in the first place. 
so the universe evolved in just the right way with just the right conditions to give rise to uh, to to us who can find who can find a grand unified theory. Hmm. So um, that was Hawking's resolution to the paradox, natural selection. But also, I want to add uh, back to the first question. Uh, what was the first question? Your first uh, question was. I don't know. It was about the two theories. Oh yeah, the two theories that were incompatible: gravity and yeah, quantum mechanics. Yeah, and do you know the the latest breakthrough to to uh, quantize gravity? No, actually. Well, what is the closest we have to a theory of quantum gravity? S string theory. Oh. That's but right. string theory is not falsifiable because those things are so small we can't physically observe them. Well, first of all, that's another question, and second of all, uh, they're trying to the string theorists are trying to make uh, predictions that can be confirmed by uh, things such as colliders or accelerators, such as the Large Hadron Collider oh. or Fermi Lab. So, so they're trying to work to make it uh, falsifiable. But string theory is the closest we have to a theory of quantum gravity, hmm. uh, and um, string theory used to be used to have many more dimensions than it does now. So I used to have I don't know like twenty I don't know like twenty seven or fifteen dimensions. But a physicist you might have heard of him. His name is Edward Witten. Uh, combined many of those dimensions and packed them into just eleven dimensions. And that's now known as M theory. Well, actually, it was known as M theory. I've actually mm -hmm. heard of that, uh, but I don't really know yeah. that much about quantum gravity. Yeah. So I'm still working on that. And uh, well, but I did hear this one great analogy. What if those other seven dimensions? Uh, there were already. Uh, yeah. Uh, like for example, uh, if we look at an ant crawling on a straw, if we look very yeah. closely, the straw looks three dimensional. So does the ant. And, but then, when we uh, look further away, the straw you know, looks like a thick line or like a rectangle, and then the ant is moving up it. So mm -hmm. that's two dimensions. Yeah. And then when we zoom out even more, the straw just appears as a little white line, and the ant is invisible. So that's one dimension. Yeah, that's called manifolds. When you get really close to a 3D surface, it looks 2D. When you get really close to a 2D surface, it looks 1D. So like just like if you zoom in into a curve, it looks like a tangent. Yeah. Okay. So uh, so uh, I actually have some questions. Okay. Yeah. I th I think I'm done with my questions. So here are my two questions. Number one, uh, what was the difference between <coughs> Copernican view of the solar system and the Kepler's view of the solar system? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so me. Copernican view was um was a heliocentric view. No, but can you tell me what exactly were the differences between yeah. Copernican and Kepler's view? Because uh, uh, both of them th uh, thought of heliocentrism. But one was thinking about circles and the other about ellipses, right? Mm -hmm. And so that seems to be the fundamental difference. But who's who? Well, Kepler is known for, uh, for finding that the planetary orbits are ellipses. Or the three laws of cap uh, orbitals. By yeah, Kepler. let's talk about them. Oh, oh no, so, uh, uh, no, it's fine. Uh, so, can I move on to my second question? Okay, sure. So, what are the two places uh, that were incompatible, like completely incompatible with the current laws of physics? Where are the two places in time or in space where the current laws of physics just crumble? Uh, is it a uh, the Big Bang and the black hole. Mm -hmm. Good job. So why don't you talk a little bit about one of them, I'll talk about the other. So uh, what about how they relate? I mean, that's a pretty hard subject. Yeah, we'll get to that, but first talk about one of well, them. Well, the Big Bang Oh, uh, so the Big Bang happened about 13.8 million billion years ago. Not million, billion. Mm. And mm. it was and we discovered that this, uh, this approximate time was discovered by uh, Edwin Hubble, as mm -hmm. we talked about in our previous discussion. Yeah, okay. Now, this kind of opened up the can of worms that is, what is time? But uh, we can get to that later. So, anyway, what 
uh, the Big Bang was. Uh, so some people are still debating the Big Bang. Many think that the Big Bang isn't real, that the universe was created so that it appeared to be a Big Bang, but uh, there actually wasn't any Big Bang. And no, I'm saying Big Bang a lot. That's another one. So anyway, the so anyway, the, there are many different theories about how the universe might have been created. But all we know is it's, it's expanding. So that could mean that in the past there was a creator. And that could be. Now, obviously, some people are atheists. They don't think there was a creator, and this definitely doesn't imply that there is. There must be a creator, mm -hmm. but it does play some. Uh, but but it does. As Stephen Hawking himself says, there's limits on where he could have carried out his job. What? Yeah. yeah, that's what I said. I said when. Okay, so, so now you talk about black holes. Yeah, so uh, black holes, just like the Bing Bang, uh, have a singularity, right? Mm -hmm. um, a point of infinite density. Uh, that means there's a... Infinite density? That's right, that means there's an infinite amount of mass packed into an infinitely small volume of space. So that results so, in an infinite density. So that results in... Infinity, which... But, well, actually, let's talk a little bit more about why the laws of physics break down at, at those um, at those edges of space-time. So, um, first of all, the question of... Uh, if you think about black holes and the Big Bang, what do they share in common? They share a point of infinite density, a singularity. And so, the singularities is where uh, general relativity breaks down. It's at those points of singularities. Uh, anything before that we can predict. So we can predict how, uh, if you have an observer just outside a black hole, how, how much he's going to stretch. But uh, when the singularity comes into play, then uh, general relativity and quantum mechanics, uh, yeah, they're, they're of no use anymore. I actually have a small question about uh, black holes. Yeah. Like, assuming you were uh, immune, to like the uh, uh, being ripped apart immediately by the black hole. I know that's something you can't do, but like uh, assume that you uh, somehow, anyhow, you are immune to the black hole, yeah. uh, to the effects of stretching and stuff. So uh, because the laws of physics break down, would yeah. your body uh, uh, become dysfunctional? What do you mean? So if you you said that the laws of physics break down, so would the uh, like the blood circulation and stuff like that become oh, this? Oh, oh, I mean we don't know what's actually gonna happen. What I mean by the laws of physics breaking down is we cannot predict, we cannot predict what's gonna happen oh. if you end up in this in a singularity. Oh right? no. Um, we just can't predict at, at those points. And obviously, it's um, some physicists have suggested that. Uh, if you enter a black hole, you'll come out the other side of a On wormhole. A white hole. Of a wormhole, yeah. Wormhole. Oh. Yeah. Other... Some, some physicists say there's white holes that lead you to different universes. Yeah, white holes, there's no um, observational evidence of that. Yeah, those. obviously. They're just a mathematical um, entity right now. So, anyway, so those are the two things that, uh, two places where the uh, all known uh, laws of physics break down. It's at the singularities of black holes and the black Big Bang. Holes. Black holes are scary. Yeah, and there's uh, still a lot we don't know about them. As you know recently, in 2015, um, uh, astronomers around the world were able to capture uh, an image of a was black hole. Wasn't that 2019? No, I, yeah, I think it was 2019. It was 2019. Oh, that well, means... It was right after Stephen Hawking died. Oh, that means 2015 was uh, LIGO. Okay, okay, never mind. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that means... Yeah, that was gravitational waves. Uh, actually, gravitational waves can also... Uh, can also be released from black hole mergers. Mm. So, when two black holes spin together and then they finally coalesce into one black hole, uh, that can also release gravitational waves. Now, I finally have a one last thing to say. I'm sorry. But just explain pretty quickly, very quickly. How does Hawking radiation work? And how do black holes, like, die? Well, if I knew, <laughs> well, that would be amazing. But I don't really know. Uh, here's how, 
how much I know about Hawking radiation. Um, Stephen Hawking mm-hmm. discovered it. Um, but Hawking radiation works like this. Um, so uh, the idea is that, uh, as far as I understand it, here's the idea. Um, it has to do with the quantum physics of the of the event horizon of of the black hole. So, do you know the the conservation of charge? No. Right. Uh, there is a there is a rule in physics that the total amount of charge in the universe needs to be conserved. So if I create a proton here, I have to create an electron there so that the total uh, amount of charge is conserved, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, Hawking's idea was, can I apply the conservation of charge around a black hole? Well, yes I can. What if I create a charge inside the event horizon of a black hole and I create a charge outside the event horizon of a black hole. Well, the charge inside the event horizon is going to fall into the black hole, and the charge outside is going to escape. So what do you have? Hmm. Have, have you been listening? What do we have? So, uh... The, the charge uh, inside the event horizon falls in. The charge outside goes out. So, so what if that still feed the black hole? No, the, the big idea here is that you violated the conservation of charge. Oh. So to resolve that problem, or this is, this is how I understand A new imaginary it. particle is created? To resolve this problem, the black hole radiates, right? Oh. Uh, it radiates and so it, 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 it uh, very, it. very, very slowly shrinks in size. Um, so essentially, the black hole eats some uh, eats some uh, particle, and then the universe uh, forces that out of its mouth uh, because it's violating some rule. Uh, maybe yes. So that's as far as that's my saying. analogy of it. Obviously, yeah. that's uh, not perfect. Okay. So thank you for being with uh, taking the time to be here with me today. No you problem. obviously have a lot of other duty to do being a Harvard exoplanet researcher and part uh, and part of many newspaper organizations and stuff like that as well. So thank you.